Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry? said the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, Let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother, Abel, and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know. Cain responded, Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain replied to the Lord, My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord replied, No for I will give you a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. The Descendants of Cain Cain had sexual relations with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Then Cain founded a city, which he named Enoch, after his son. Enoch had a son named Ered. Ered became the father of Mehujul. Mehujul became the father of Methushul. Methushul became the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women. The first was named Ada. And the second was Zila. Ada gave birth to Jebel, who was the first of those who raise livestock and live in tents. His brother's name was Jubal, the first of all who play the harp and flute. Lamech's other wife, Zila, gave birth to a son named Tubal hyphen Cain. He became an expert in forging tools of bronze and iron. Tubal hyphen Cain had a sister named Nama. One day, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilla, hear my voice. Listen to me, you wives of Lamech. I have killed a man who attacked me, a young man who wounded me. If someone who kills Cain is punished seven times, then the one who kills me will be punished 77 times. Adam had sexual relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth, for she said, God has granted me another son in place of Abel, whom Cain killed. When Seth grew up, he had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. Cain presented some of his crops. Notice it does not say the best portions. Abel brought the best. The Lord was probably like, thanks, but no thanks. I already got crops. 
but with Abel, by bringing his best, it was clear that he really wanted to do it, and God was like, yes, I really want this gift. Cain was understandably upset. I mean, who doesn't accept a gift? It seems harsh. But then it becomes apparent that the Lord is not just talking about the gift and focuses more on reading Cain's mail. You will be accepted if you do what's right, and sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you, but you must be its master. This seems like God not only being rhetorical, but also prophetic. He knew Cain was going to have some choices to make. Am I the only one who thinks it's weird that God and Cain are having this conversation as if God was actually there in the flesh? Like someone who was a regular fixture in all of their lives, not invisible? Well, Cain killed Abel. Guess he didn't master that sin. <laughs> it also feels like it was important to mention this in the Bible because we all have sin in our lives we need to master. Like Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane, sleeping instead of praying and later failing. Then later the Lord asked Cain, where his bro Abel was, which has to be rhetorical. It seems like all of this is there as a lesson to humanity. Are we our brother's keeper? Over and over again, the answer is yes in the Bible. In verses 13 and 14, Cain complains about his punishment being too great for him to bear. Oh no, you're going to be a homeless wanderer? Anyone who finds you will kill you? Oh, let's just see what Abel has to say about this matter. Oh, he can't because he is dead. You killed him, Cain. It's hard to feel sorry for Cain at this point. Except for the lifespan of people back then, he probably had 900 more years of living to do. I mean, yeah, 900 years to live as a wanderer. Question, the mark the Lord put on Cain, how is it, how is just a mark going to convey a warning of sevenfold punishment causing people to not kill Cain? I'm curious. If Cain had a son and then founded a city named after his son and settled in the land of Nod, he doesn't seem like much of a homeless wanderer. Know what I mean? Lamech seems like the first of all gangsta rappers with his rap brag. <laughs> it is definitely a different way of telling stories. So second and third generation people started to worship the Lord by name. I wonder why then. Was this when the Lord stopped walking and talking physically among man like a constant fixture? I got so many questions.